guys, it's Fiona from Even Tide Reads and today we're here to talk about the YA Book Prize shortlist. The YA Book Prize, if you don't know, is a UK and Ireland prize that is for celebrating YA books published by UK and Irish writers. This is the second year it has been running and I thought today it would be nice to have a chat about the books that are on the list. I'm not the authority on these because I have not read them all but I own quite a few and I just want to talk about the list and see what you guys think. Without further ado let's talk about the first book on this list which is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. Now I read Holly Bourne's debut novel Soulmates a couple of years ago and I have to say I was not a huge fan so I'm not really delved into any of her other books but I have heard that these books are supposed to be quite good. I've heard nothing but brilliant things about her two most recent books and maybe I should add them to my list at some point. The second book on the list is The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. Now this obviously won the Costa this year, the overall winner, the second ever children's novel to win the overall Costa Prize. That in itself is pretty incredible. So to also be nominated for the YA Book Prize shortlist is also pretty cool. I did start reading, um, I think I've read about 20 pages, 18 pages, um, and I'm sort of dipping and diving into it because it's very, very different from what I would normally read. I sometimes like a bit more of a gothic -y book, but I haven't been in the right frame of mind, but everyone I've spoken to who's read it has been like, why have you not read this book yet? Why? I'm like, I'm really sorry. My boss absolutely adores it and will not shut up about it, so I will be reading it this year. The next book on the list is The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melissa Salisbury. This was Waterstone's book of the month for, I can't remember, but sometime last year when the first one came out, it was our book of the month. Did incredibly well. Again, I've heard wonderful things and I've had the book for a while and still not read it. Now the sequel is also out. So I think it's maybe time I should read it, don't you think? Now the third book on the list is one I've not heard a lot about and I'm gonna have to look at my piece of paper to get the name correct because I don't know it. And that is The Curious Tale of the Lady Caribou by Katherine Johnson. Hopefully I've got that right. I know nothing about this book. Like, where has it come from? I have vague recollections of seeing it on NetGalley but I know nothing else about it and it's just kind of come from nowhere. So maybe this is a book that I should be looking into. Has anyone read it? Please tell me what you think, whether it's worth picking up or not. And then on the list, we have One by Sarah Crossan. Now this book I am waiting for in paperback because I wasn't sure about buying it in the hardcover. And I know it's quite a difficult tale. It deals with two conjoined sisters and I feel like it's very beautiful, but it's probably going to break my heart from what I've heard and I know that quite a few booksellers and bloggers absolutely adore it and I really can't wait for the paperback to come out. Now a book I really really should have read by now because it's been out for over a year is The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. This is a book about dealing with who you are, your sexuality, what it means to be male, female etc and one of the girls at the book club, Lottie, read it recently and told me it was incredible and thus I really really need to read it, like real soon, because it's also nominated for the Waterstones Children's Book Prize teen category, so I really 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 should read it. Now on to one of the two books on the list I have actually read and that is Patrick Ness's The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I enjoyed this book, I thought it was good, it was fun, it dealt with the people who aren't actually meant to be the main characters and it was really interesting to see someone do a take on that and I love how this book looks and it's so pretty Patrick Ness is kind of awesome just as a human being to be perfectly honest so it kind of places on the list if you haven't read it yet I suggest you do go and read it another book I haven't heard much about but I have actually seen in the flesh is Concentrate by William Sutcliffe now again I know nothing about this book but the cover every time I see it on the shelf at work I'm like it just looks so interesting. What does that mean? And I've yet to even look at the back of it, which I know is pretty bad. But I've just got too many books right now, and I don't want to add to it until I've done a complete gut 
then I'm sure it will probably be added to the list of ones to get when it comes into paperback. Next on to the other book I have read from this list and that is Unbecoming by Jenny Downham. I did review this book. I really really enjoyed this book but I really really struggled to read it. It deals with dementia and sort of finding yourself at the same time and not forgetting things that are important to you. And my grandma is suffering the last stages of dementia at the moment and it did make me cry, it made me feel very emotional and very vulnerable, but it had a beautiful message and a beautiful ending. And if you want to know more about it, check out my review, which I'll leave linked down below. And yeah, definitely a book you should pick up, definitely. And this list would not be complete without asking for it by Louise O'Neill. I now have no excuse not to read this book, and I know you're gonna shout at me because I've not read it yet. I really, how do I put this? I understand that subject matter is very important, but I read for escapism most of the time. So I've yet to be in the right frame of mind to tackle this book because this is not going to be an easy read and I know that. And I've been told by several people it is something I should read and I will do. It's just, I need to be so in the right mood if I'm feeling like I'm feeling recently, which is tired, stressed, annoyed, angry, I'm not gonna wanna read this, so. I'm hoping during my next week off, which is in April, I will knuckle down and finally read this. So, what are my thoughts on the shortlist? So far, pretty good. I think it's a really, really good bag. There are some that are fairly obvious, some that are pretty under the radar, and I think it will make for a very interesting discussion piece. There aren't any surprises as to what I thought would be on the list, because to be honest, I had no idea. I'm looking through my books now, sort of thinking, is there anything that should have been on the list, really? But the list is pretty solid. It's good. There's nothing I'm thinking, why isn't that on the list? Like, I, f I, I can't think of anything. Part of that might be because I read a lot of American authors. I have so much UKYA in my to read. But I really need to get on that, don't I? I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Please feel free to leave your thoughts down below of what you think of the shortlist. Is it what you wanted? Is there anything missing that you've read and you think that should be on there? Don't forget the shortlist is for UK and Irish writers. I will see you in my next video. Bye!